this is Brian Kinross. In this video segment, we'll cover the topic of influx process setup, starting on the green curve. To create our influx process setup, we will follow this guide and an influx process development checklist. For this video segment, we will assume a conventional process exists and use it as a baseline to develop influx process settings. When cycling with a conventional process while influx is off, a blue curve representing melt pressure will be plotted on the influx dashboard screen. Information from this plot will be used for our initial influx process setup. Following step one of the influx process development checklist, we will first enable and set up melt travel. To do this, move the cursor at the beginning of the melt pressure curve and record the melt pressure at this point. Now select profile, then profile setup, and then enter the value recorded here. Then turn on melt travel. This completes the melt travel setup. Next, run a conventional cycle that will use the melt travel pressure entered to initiate melt pressure set point as its origin. Step two, let's calculate influx melt pressure. You'll do this by navigating to the dashboard screen on the influx controller and position our cursor at the peak of the melt pressure plot of the conventional cycle previously ran and record the maximum pressure at this point. After entering the peak melt pressure recorded, Let's calculate an influx melt pressure by taking 60% of that pressure, or multiplying the peak pressure by 0.6. This yields 6475.8. Now move the cursor to a point in the hold pressure phase where hold pressure is stabilized, and record this value. The greater of the last two values recorded will be used as the influx melt pressure. Now let's return to our dashboard screen, and we'll enter 6475 as our melt pressure set point. Now we will move to step number three to create a virtual curve trigger and shape. To do this we will navigate to the virtual sensor shape section of the setup screen and we're going to set the virtual curve pressure to be one-third of the influx melt pressure previously calculated. Also in the virtual sensor shape section on the setup screen we're going to set the time constant to be 0.2 seconds. So let's navigate to the setup screen and then here we will change the trigger mode to be melt travel and then enter the pressure that is one-third of our melt pressure, which is 2158. We're also going to enter the time constant of 0.2. Next, we're going to calculate the melt travel trigger position. This is the melt travel that will trigger our virtual curve, or initiate the virtual cavity pressure curve. Our virtual curve need to be created in the absence of an in-cavity sensor in the mold. And navigating to the dashboard screen, record the travel value at the point of conventional transfer or peak pressure on the conventional curve. Now let's navigate to the setup page and enter the melt travel value from the dashboard page into this field. The virtual sensor trigger and the virtual sensor shape settings are now completed. Since we've already calculated and entered influx set point pressure, we're now going to calculate and enter step time and PFA. To do this, we're going to set the step time equal to the inject time plus the hold time and then multiply by 1.3. The purpose for this is to create a long step time that can be used to do range finding after we get initial setup of our influx process. Using the influx plot of the conventional process, we can see that the total time for fill and hold is 3.993 seconds. Multiplying this by 1.3 gives us 5.2 seconds. We will enter this as our step time. PFA should be entered as negative 3. This completes the setup for melt pressure, step time, PFA, melt travel, and our virtual curve. The next step is to set up our influx tuning. We do this by selecting tuning on the dashboard page and then select auto tune. For the values of P, I, and I2, we'll enter 1000 for P, 0 0.001 for I, and 0 0.01 for I2. Then we'll turn influx on. Before running the cycle with influx on, Make sure the set point filter is set to zero, and in the setup page that the PFA delay is also set to zero. Now, run a cycle with influx on. Before running the next cycle, select Perform Auto Tune on next shot. Auto Tune Ready will be highlighted, and the gray field will appear. During this cycle, recommended gains will be calculated. These gains can be moved into the Gain 1 column by selecting Move to Gain 1. The gains for P, I, and I2 will now be used. If PFA set to negative 3, this should create short shots or fill only shots. You can adjust the virtual curve melt travel trigger to achieve the fill only volume required for this part. Target is 95% full. 
To achieve more volume, increase this value, and to achieve less volume, decrease the value from the original set point. Now that you have a 95% fill only part, increase PFA until you have full parts. Now that you have full parts, you're able to begin range finding with influx. Please view the video segment on this topic. Hope this video has been helpful to you. Enjoy processing with influx.